What is cycle syncing and should you do it? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a double board certified OBGYN and REI. That means I'm a fertility doctor and I'm a hormone expert. And today I wanna to talk to you about cycle syncing. What does this mean? What should you do and can you do this and why this may benefit you or not? So I'm gonna break down the menstrual cycle, what the different phases are and how you could influence each phase with your life to feel more balanced or more complete. If you like learning about your body and your fertility, feel free to subscribe to the channel and please do. This helps spread my message to more people and help everybody become empowered and educated about their body and their fertility. And a quick note, if you like what you're hearing and you wanna have a deep dive into your fertility, I do have the Enhance Your Natural Fertility course. So you can feel free to go to my website at nataliecrawfordmd.com and learn more. All right, so what is cycle syncing? The idea here is that during the different phases of our menstrual cycle, we have different needs when it comes to our body and that you're leaning into these instead of just trying to act like everything's the same at one time. However, in order to understand this, or implement this, you have to understand the different cycles. So let's start with a quick review of the menstrual cycle. We're gonna consider this to have four different phases. So if we remember what happens, we have something happening at both the ovary and the uterus level, and these are controlled by the brain. So if we think about the ovary, I like to use the analogy that there's a little vault inside where all your eggs are kept. And every month, a group of eggs comes out of that vault. Each egg grows in a follicle. The brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone, and that's FSH. FSH is what gets a follicle to grow, and as that follicle grows, the egg inside matures and makes estrogen. This is the follicular phase. Officially, it starts when you start your period, and it ends at ovulation. Growing a follicle, predominant hormone FSH from the brain, predominant hormone made from the ovaries is estrogen. There's no progesterone in this phase, so this is estrogen dominant, and this is the time where the lining of the uterus is growing really thick. If we divide it up even more, the very first part of that when you're actually bleeding and you're on your period is the menstrual phase. So when you're bleeding, that's usually going to be about three to seven days at the beginning of the follicular phase. Some people consider that menstrual. Then the rest of the time when you're growing an egg, that's the rest of the follicular phase. When the egg gets mature, would you know this based on high estrogen levels? So those high estrogen levels of over 200 picograms per milliliter for 50 hours triggers the brain to send out LH, which is another hormone called luteinizing hormone. LH is the surge that gets you to ovulate. If you check ovulation predictor kits, LH is what you are checking for. So it's not a confirmation that ovulation is happening. It is the signal that it's about to happen. LH tells that follicle to rupture and the egg is released. That's the ovulation phase. Peak estrogen levels that you're going to get, so the highest estrogen to progesterone ratio because there's no progesterone yet, peak LH is happening and that follicle is rupturing. Then you're gonna go into the luteal phase. What happens is after the follicle has released the egg, it reforms into the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum makes progesterone. So it makes progesterone at pulsatile intervals secreted from pulses of LH from the brain. And that corpus luteum normally lives about 12 days and then it dies, your progesterone level drops, and then you get a period again. That's the signal to bleed. So during that luteal phase, you have the corpus luteum, it is making progesterone. You have estrogen too, because the follicle is still making estrogen, but it is a progesterone dominant phase. So this is where you have much more progesterone than estrogen in this phase. Progesterone compacts the lining and gets it ready for implantation. It opens and closes the implantation window. You have to have this, a set number of days of progesterone to get pregnant. And if you do get pregnant, that pregnancy will make HCG, which is the hormone you test on a pregnancy test, and that HCG will stimulate that corpus luteum to keep making more constant progesterone levels. So some of us consider when you get pregnant, the luteal phase doesn't really end for quite a while because that corpus luteum keeps living until the placenta grows in completely around nine-ish week. But presuming we're just talking about a normal cycle, you start over again. You start bleeding, the body starts recruiting follicles, you have the follicular phase, you ovulate, then you have a corpus luteum, you make progesterone, you don't get pregnant, progesterone drops, and you bleed, and the cycle happens over again. What is cycle syncing? Cycle syncing is saying during these different time periods, we need different requirements. And there's truth to this, if we just think about how the body's forming and what these hormones do for us. I will put a disclaimer across that if you're on hormonal contraception, 
there's, there's no cycle sinking, right? You're not going through these phases. If we use the combined birth control pill, which is a great option for contraception, it's giving you a steady dose of estrogen and progesterone every single day until you don't take it or you take the placebos of which it drops. So you really just have these two phases. It's not like this phase where you have no progesterone and then progesterone, which is what the body's natural cycle is. It doesn't mean one is better or worse, but the idea of sinking is to clue into your natural cycle. Okay, so let's just break down, we're gonna call them four phases, menstrual, follicular, ovulation, and luteal. In the menstrual cycle, you're bleeding. So your body has high inflammation, that's part of the bleeding process. It's trying to get rid of that old endometrial tissue. It's also healing itself back up. So the focus and the period phase really should be on trying to decrease inflammation. So this is going to be looking at how you can have lots of good fruits and vegetables, tons of water, do focus on iron. So your spinach and leafy greens are a great source of that. Your B vitamins can be really important. So especially B12, if you eat meat, eggs and seafood, shellfish, fish can be really great with some good omega-3 fatty acids in them. If you don't, I really like walnuts and some other nut-based things to give you some of those omega-3s. And again, with those plants, we have spinach, kale, broccoli, and your plant-based proteins like lentils, beans, tofu, those are going to be good sources. If you like spices and herbs, you're really going to focus on an anti-inflammatory angle during this phase. So that's going to be like turmeric, cinnamon curry, cayenne, and garlic. So those are things you could add in while you're cooking to try to help with that anti-inflammatory property. As far as your energy goes during the menstrual phase, your energy tends to be a little bit lower. You don't have those estrogen levels rising yet. As your estrogen levels start rising, you stop bleeding. So during this phase, you're really hormonally low. You have low progesterone and low estrogen. You should move your body, but this is not the time to be stressing yourself out with HIIT workouts or hardcore training or trying to get your personal best. So these are things like where I love walking, I love yoga, or really light strength training. All right, then we move on to the follicular phase, which is really going to be that estrogen phase. And the female body loves estrogen. So this is when you're gonna start noticing sharp, clear focus, good energy. You're gonna to start to feel really good. You have low progesterone. You're going to not feel very blue loaded after you end your period. And so this is the time to really hone in on your good energy, your good focus. So this is going to be a time to get projects done, to really think about that to-do list, to increase the intensity of your workouts. You can do HIIT workouts here or strength training to build or try to say, I'm gonna do my long run. This is when you're really gonna be dialed in and focusing the best. As far as our needs for our body, we want to be nourishing the growing egg potential. So we like, you know, high levels of fruits, vegetables, and fiber can be really great here. So a really plant-focused diet, if you eat animal products, this is a fine time to have dairy, to have those fish-based animal sources or lean meats. When we think about veggies and stuff that are really excellent in the follicular phase for egg quality, we're going to look at your nuts chia seeds, hemp seeds, quinoa. So all the good antioxidant fruits like the berries and those really good vegetables, those root vegetables and veggies like green beans, broccoli, sweet potatoes, peas, kind of have a colorful diet in this phase. All right, then you have ovulation phase. So, so far you have had menstrual cycle and follicular and now you have ovulation. Ovulation is the peak estrogen you're going to get. You are going to notice potentially that you're gonna have that type four cervical mucus. So increase in vaginal secretions. That's from the high estrogen making that cervical mucus is more sticky. It might be when you feel more in the mood, when you're ready for intercourse, and obviously if you're trying to get pregnant, this is when you're going to focus in on. But you should have high energy here with that peak estrogen. So be fun, enjoy yourself. This is, you know that you're about to go into this feed and breed standpoint. You've been going through your confident and energy follicular phase, and then you're about to kind of switch gears. So focus in again, those high intensity or weight training can be excellent. Studies have shown that people who do weight training in the follicular and ovulation phases build more muscle than they do in the luteal phase. So you're really able to focus in nicely here. You really wanna be supporting ovulation. So antioxidants are gonna be key here. Omega-3 fatty acids, so nuts, eggs, fish, also going to be looking at antioxidants. So that's going to be your berries and your leafy greens are gonna be a huge focus and lots of water as the body's about to transition into the luteal phase. The luteal phase is after ovulation, again, when the body starts making progesterone. In the luteal phase, your body is transitioning and preparing for a pregnancy. 
progesterone does this. It's the progestational, the pro-pregnancy hormone, meaning you're going to be more bloated. Your energy is going to be less. You're going to feel less focused and concentrated and more dull. This is also why people have pregnancy brain, if you've ever heard of that, because in pregnancy, the progesterone levels are so high. So know that, right? So if you can get more of your to-do list action items that take brain fat power, do that in the follicular phase. And then in the luteal phase, you're going to be relieved from some of that pressure of the tasks you have to get done. So do your first task that you need to in the morning, know that you're not going to have the same stamina from mental energy that you could have. Otherwise, you're not going to feel as good. You're going to be more tired. You're not going to have the same energy. That's what progesterone does. It wants you to relax and get ready to have a baby. So it wants your energies, just think about it, it wants your energy and your calories focused on going towards supporting a new pregnancy. Feed and breed. You might be hungrier during this time. That's progesterone as well. And that's okay, lean into it. This is when you're going to not really wanna focus on high intensity working out. I love yoga in this phase. I love walking. Give your body the rest that it's asking for. Take it easier. You are going to be more bloated, so you really wanna to try to stay away from salty foods in this phase. Not a great time to drink alcohol because that's gonna dehydrate you even more. So if you're sinking, this would be the time where you would avoid that. You also could potentially be pregnant. And this is a really good time to take in eating the rainbow. So we like fiber a lot, so your brown rice, quinoa, lentils, sweet potatoes, broccoli, figs, sunflower seeds, dark chocolates. Think about the foods that are going to be very nourishing for your body. And if you meal plan, think about that. You know, those things that you kind of maybe crave more, that's going to be into this luteal phase. So those healthy fats like avocados, olive oils, nuts, those are going to be very encouraged during this luteal phase time. And then the process starts over again and you're back at the menstrual phase. Menstrual phase again, so inflammation, you're going to be trying to drop that inflammation down. You're going to be listening to your body. You're going to have your lowest hormone levels. Then during the follicular phase, you're going to start to be have rising estrogen, increased concentration, focus, and confidence. You're going to delegate more mental and physical energy in this phase. In your ovulation phase, you're going to have your peak estrogen levels, your peak focus. You're also going to feel potentially more in the mood. And then in the luteal phase, you're going to be in that fed state. You're going to be working on supporting a pregnancy and you're going to have less energy as your body's trying to conserve some of that for a potential pregnancy. And then the process is going to start over. All right. I love the idea of looking at your life and trying to synchronize up what you're doing with different phases because it's going to make you feel best. And then you also are giving yourself a pass, understanding that you may not feel your peak in your luteal phase and you can give that energy in your follicular phase. And so I'd love to hear if you guys try this and what you may think of it. So feel free to follow along. You can also check out the Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or learn more on the As Woman podcast. Again, I have the Enhance Your Natural Fertility course if you really want to take a deep dive into lifestyle and fertility and how the two relate. Thanks, friends.